Yeah, she once said that she walked on a stage at Woodstock and nobody and walked off a celebrity. That's Melanie you guys are hearing in the background. A uh, woman passed away just yesterday, uh, as you hear this podcast, about five days ago. But yeah, Melanie became a big deal after Woodstock. Folks, it's the Monday show, and I am Vinny Tortorich. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. Me and Melanie and Anna Lachina are here to help you get them back. Black. It's soft and succulent at the beginning of this process. But hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed. Let's hear just a little bit more from Melanie. Yeah, hippy dippy. We bled inside each other's wounds. Anna, are you familiar with Melanie? I am not. I, I got to admit, I had never heard of Melanie until her death announcement yesterday, but may she rest in power. Well, I, I heard about it through original Kim, who wrote to me and said, okay. hey, because Kim and I are the same age and we grew up on the same music. Okay. And um, she wrote to me and said, hey, Melanie is dead. And like and she wrote, you need to you, you need to to um, play Lay Down Candles. And but you mm. see, the song I was thinking of was not Lay Down Candles. The, 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 the first song I kind of remember Melanie doing was uh, this song. Tell me if you know this song, Anna. OK. I'm almost positive that these songs were played at the campground. Um, they had to be in yes. a box. There's no way that they for were. sure. She was such a thing, it, you know. Look, it, she was a pop star. She wrote pop style songs, right? Right. Um, but she, I think she wrote a lot for other people. She was like a real thing in the '70s, and like I said, popular. On, by the way, folks, we're going to be talking NSNG 101: How to Get Started on Low Carb Today. So hang in there while I just do one more song for Anna. Anna, tell me if you know this one. You ready? Okay. Here we go. This is the last Melanie song. I'm sorry for all you millennials who are going, who's this woman? And was she moaning on about in these songs? <laughs> yeah, th this woman, um, what, you know, just what, what a great singer songwriter back in those eras. But here we go. Uh, this was another big hit 1971. Here's Melanie. Th they call her a great singer songwriter, but those songs are pretty simple. Uh, but you know, they, they, they were on the radio. They captured our imagination. And uh, she, that's what the hippy dippy movement was all about. You know, you know, the, hey, I'm writing these great songs and look what they've done to them. Uh, they, they're messing them up. OK. And they also put a lot of money in your pocket there, Melanie. Uh, she will be missed. <laughs> uh, I was a fan. Um, She's and, cute. I just looked her up. Look how cute she is. Oh, yeah. Just a darling. And and I always love that quote. I walked on stage with nobody and walked off a celebrity. She was actually, her mom drove her to Woodstock. She got Gosh. up on stage. She didn't have a band. She didn't have anything. She got up there with an acoustic guitar, played a couple of songs, and uh, got record deals out of yeah. it. Yeah, so, amazing. Yeah. So um, there you have it. Uh, That's awesome. And, uh, uh, we're going to get get down to business yeah. here today because it's I'm ready. towards the end of the first month of the year. Yeah, do we think people, do we still think we have them? Have what? The folks, the new folks, you think they're still here with us? Uh, look, guys, I'm, are you there? You are know you, what? Please not, let, it, let us know on socials. Uh, look, I, I hope some of the new folks are still there, but I was talking to, um, well, we weren't talking live yet. We're going to talk this weekend. Uh, he calls himself Bama Bass over on uh, Twitter. Okay. On X. Uh, but his name is Eric. And uh, Eric, following an SNG, big fan of the show. Great. Love here, it. Lost, lost a hundred some odd pounds. What? Yeah, look, Eric lost a hell of a lot of weight. The guy started off in the 400s and went, like I said, I haven't talked to Amazing. him. Amazing. But um, I'm going to be talking to him this weekend. And uh, he he put a tweet out because, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not doing as well anymore. It's like, oh boy, I need to get on the phone with this Eric and get him straight. Okay. Right? Well, and, he might cancel uh, his appointment with you after he hears this show. No, I'm not going to give him all. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I, I need to get in depth. But when he wrote to me, I, I got him off of X and I said, hey, just write to me at this email address. And we went back and forth. And he said, yeah, it's not that I'm not losing weight anymore. You know, he goes, I had a little setback this summer and this and that and the other thing. But um, he, I, I want to say, I don't want to exaggerate. I want to, I want to say, he said, between September, October, and the end of the year, only lost another twenty pounds. Only another twenty pounds. 
Tell that to yeah. her, Kim. Tell that to tell that to every woman who's perimenopausal. Yeah. yeah. And, and let them come over to Alabama and kick you in the balls. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're going to do. Um, but I get it. You no, know, that, I think that's great. But I, I get that you think that it's going to continue at the same pace. But I, that's still awesome. And you well, should be praising yourself. Look, the bottom line is he's doing well. He He's getting at it. He, he reminds yeah. me of Dave Dana. That's out there. He reminds me of uh, Scott King and. Yeah. Uh, Tim Malian, yeah, you know, all these guys, right? All of my, all of I call these guys my heroes because I look at these people and they they make me get up in the morning, right? Right on. I even saw when everyone's least favorite Dobbins was saying, "You know what? I've been fucking up." And I is need, this Matthew? That'd be Matthew. Oh, okay. Um, so um, he, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, you know, I've 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 been getting Poor up, Matt. been fucking up a bit. I need to get back to it." So. Look, I've always said, folks, it's not a shame to get knocked down. It's only a shame if you stay down. Correct. And that's what Anna and I will be talking about today. Is well, I got to say this, too. Go on. You know, people, when people go, oh, I did really bad, but I'm recommitting. I'm like, okay. Like, like it's supposed to, and like, well, now, now we stop that self-talk where you beat the shit out of yourself. Like, right. who cares? Today is what's important right now right at this moment. Like, it doesn't matter. Let's just move forward. And or, please don't uh, uh, spend here. that time going, I did the first two weeks of January and then I fell off and then it was Super Bowl. It's like, no, come back. Come back right now. You come right back. We, we're like, AA. We, you welcome back. All you got to do is, yeah. is have a, a want. Look, I hear people saying, I'm doing 75 hard. Okay, that's fine. You need to get 75 days to get yourself. Go hard. Go hard in the paint. Uh, or I'm doing NS and GAF. And, Great. and all this kind of stuff. Great. Wonderful. Whatever, whatever it takes to get you there, do it, do it, do it, whatever. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, yeah. uh, I was just watching today while I was on my uh, rowing machine. I was watching Rocky Balboa, which is also, I think, known as Rocky five. Mm -hmm. Folks. Is this one of the new Rockies or one of the old Rockies? It's Rocky before when he, he went back and did an exhibition fight. He was like in his fifties, came out of oh, retirement, okay. fought one so, more time. So it was like a mid Rocky. Yeah. It was one of the Rockies when he was still fighting and not training Apollo Creed's kids. Okay. Right. So, um, Adrian is dead. You know, mm -hmm. Rocky is running a restaurant and just becoming kind of this punch drunk has been, and he gets back in the ring again. But at some point, and and this is why I want people to watch it. You go, oh, what want to watch a Rocky movie that's going to change. Yeah. He says things. And by the way, everything Stallone does now, because I've watched Stallone's family thing, the Stallones or whatever, everything that's happened in his life, that's what's in his movies. This is a right. come from behind guy with a speech impediment, with a dad who beats the crap out of him. This is the real life. Sylvester Stallone beats the crap out of him. His dad's a piece of shit. His mom married every man that came along with a swinging dick. And this guy and his brother, Frank, are kind of on their own. And by hook or by crook, they both succeed in life. And I'm watching this movie, and he says, his son goes, you, you know what it was like for me, Dad? It was played by uh, that kid, Viglio and Meglio. What's his name? Big Milo Ventimiglio. Yeah, that guy. Um, so uh, I love I love that I speak Vinny, Vinny now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so at any rate, uh, he, he's good. You know, what it's like for me, dad, you know, living under your shadow and whole thing. And, you know, still they're standing on the street It's about two thirds into the movie. And Stallone goes, you know, what? I used to be able to hold you right here in my hand. You fit in my hand and I would hold you in the street corner and look at you and hold. And he goes, life is hard. Life will do everything to beat you down and keep you down. That's just life is what you do about that is what matters, right? And you, you say, well, then you're a motivating guy. Why did you got to watch it? Because I need to be motivated sometimes too. Sure. Right? We're all human. Yeah. I sit there and go, yeah, Rocky became a joke after Rocky four, according to everybody. Oh yeah, it was Rocky 12. But I'm watching this movie because it's a senseless movie. I can watch while, I, while I'm uh, rowing for an hour. I, the movie was mm -hmm. an hour and 40 minutes long. You know how I know? Because that's how long I was on a rowing machine for. Right. And I got something out of it. I'm talking about this six hours later. That speech is still in my head. Life will keep beating you down. You got to punch back. Right. 
That's yeah. what he's talking about. You got to punch back. And that's what this episode is about. Oh, it's the end of January. I already fucked up. I'm not doing my thing. You know, I said I was going to do my thing. And now I'm not doing my thing. And I, I promised this and that and the other thing. Okay. Fine. I'm good. You want to be a fucking loser? Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Or you can pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And you can go, okay, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to do, I'm going to do NSNG AF or just regular NSNG, or I'm going to do 75 hard to get myself back on track or whatever. But think about those guys like Dave Dana and Scott King and Tim Malian and Eric Koch and all these guys because they're out there doing it. And to a lesser degree, everybody's least favorite Dobbins. Robin's kicking ass every time I look yeah. at slinging weight all over the damn weight room. She sure is. Yeah, you know, I look at these people and I go, wow. You know, and, and I like to say Kurt's doing well, but that would be a lie. Right? Kurt's but, doing great. Kurt sent me a t-shirt, a flannel shirt, <laughs> and some coffee yesterday. Oh, I don't have to go so shopping sweet. anymore. You know, some people call. No, you're good. That's your winter wardrobe. Some people call a dash at the door and the, uh, the other Uber thing. Eh? Can I tell you the nicest thing that Kurt did? He has been, he suggested this chain of grocery stores called Hornbachers that's in right. the Fargo, Minnesota area. Right. I think it's like seven to 10 locations. And they work with the distributor that we already are onboarded with. So it seems like a real good fit. And plus one of the reps, the distributor reps stopped by our booth at the distributor show back in June. And I've kept up with her because as you know, if you want to get anything done, you got to keep up with everybody. You, you got can't to. just, you can't just email people out of blue. Hey, remember me? You got to keep no, you up. Got, with you got to stay on them like white on rice. Don't eat rice. Stay on them. If you're going to build your business. So <laughs> Uh, it, it all wound up working out. We found out in November that we're going to, they're going to bring us into Hornbachers, the uh, the four main flavors of sauce into Hornbachers. And this is great and very exciting. It, it is so hard to get into a grocery store. And oh, the I fact know. that Kurt suggested one, and then within a matter of weeks, they said, yeah, you know, just the timing was right. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it doesn't happen that easily. So we noticed, you know, the, the orders weren't coming in. They're like, well, we'll do the reset sometime in December. And then they're like, okay, we'll do it. Everything's move real slow. Like they approve you in May and then they don't put you on the shelves until September, October, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I didn't think much of it. So Kurt had wrote me that he took a picture. He was in his Hornbachers shopping in West Fargo and um, they had an empty space. Either he said next to the Rayos or where the Rayos used to be. I'm not sure. I, mean, I can't imagine they would have gotten rid of Rayos, but um, there was empty space and he thought maybe that's where yours is going to go. And I was like, oh, I hope so. So I write my broker and I write the distributor. Hey, what's going on? What are they going to order? They're like, I don't know. It's in a holding pattern for now. Well, it turns out that Kurt in the, in the interim had written to Hornbachers saying, I heard you were carrying this sauce. When is it going to be on the shelves? And they wrote him back. We've decided not to carry it. And then but Kurt didn't, he's so sweet. He didn't want to hurt my feelings or disappoint me. He didn't let me know about that. And then, so, but then all of a sudden I saw orders go into three stores a couple days ago. So I was like, well, three stores have ordered. Maybe they're only, maybe they're doing a test or something. Right. And I wrote to Kurt, yay, he looks like, and it's in West Fargo, his store. So he's like, and then he told me, he was like, I didn't want to tell you because I want to, I don't want to disappoint you or hurt your feelings. I'm like, oh, Kurt, this entire business hurts my feelings. Like, it, it's okay. Like, thank you. You're so sweet. That was so thoughtful that he's yeah, like, I'm not going to be the one realizes, to let her down. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Kurt realizes that when you're in Hollywood. Uh, my whole life, every day. Every from, day you get punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. Every day. That, that Going back to the Stallone thing, you know, when you're in Hollywood, he had to deal with it. You got you get punched in the face hard every day. Yeah, every day. It, but I thought Hollywood. that was so nice. I was like, well, the three stores ordered. Maybe that's all it's going to be. Maybe the rest of them are order. But the important thing is that Kurt LaPierre is he's trying to do right by us. And I just I just love him to pieces. And look, he's a great guy. I can't say enough about him. But going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, you get punched in the face in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Daily. It's what you do with that. 
right? Some people turn to drugs and alcohol. You know, they do. Yeah, you know, they, they can't take it anymore. They have nothing else to fall back on. They put other people just keep getting up and keep punching back. And eventually something like an Anna Vicino ends up in, in uh, Brubaker's or wherever in the hell. Hornbacher's. Isn't yeah. it fun to say Hornbacher's? Yeah, it sounds weird. Oh, yeah, we're in Hornbacher's now. Horn, Hornbacher's. I talk like Kurt now, so. Yeah, but, you know, Kurt is just writing to people on your behalf. He's sending me shirts. He's sending me clothing and coffee. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, so look, he's, I mean, a he's a good dude. At any rate, Anna. Um, 101. Let's say, let's say I wanted to start in SNG. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's read my PDF. This, I was going to say, get the PDF. That's number one. They read the PDF. They go, okay, I'm, I, I, I think this might work. At least I want to give it a shot. But the pantry is the most important room in the house. Because as I tell people, when you have a pantry, two things can happen to the food that's not good for you. You can either take it out, bypass your stomach and your liver, and throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. You can go from the pantry to the trash. Now it's going to feel weird because you're throwing stuff, you're throwing stuff away, this kind of thing. If you feel like taking it to a food bank, someone who's starving, that kind of thing, gather it all up, take it to a food bank. <laughs> Even though I think we should be feeding those people better food, but take it there. So at, at least someone who's starving can have something to eat, but this is not how you're going to eat anymore. If you if you say, well, I'm just going to keep eating this until it runs out. Well, now you're making a beeline from the pantry through your stomach <laughs> to your liver, your liver and yeah. into the toilet. If it ends up in the toilet, it's done damage. If it ends up in the trash, it's done zero damage unless you shit in your trash. Then you have a different problem. OK, so I didn't think we'd go in that direction, but I'm just saying, look, if anybody out there is doing that. If you Stop. got something in your pantry or your fridge, you want it to go directly in the trash or to a food bank, you do not want it to end up in the toilet. That means it went through your stomach and your liver and has been dispersed through your body. Cool. And you're not going to get better until you stop the bad behavior. Right? If you're new at this and you think that you're going to do it just by, um, you know, trickling it down, like, okay, when I run out of those crackers and the cereals and the oatmeal and all the stuff, then I'll start doing it. It's not like that. You you're gonna have to at some point just call it because your body's got to go through that transition of being a sugar burner to being a fat burner, and it's gonna be uncomfortable. So to me, it's like stretching out, quitting anything. I I I just say stop and and come up with your line of demarcation and stick to it. Number two, if you're the only person in your family that's doing this, Oof. and they're still eating the junk. Two things. Number one, do not proselytize to the people in your family after no. feeling better. That will not earn you any favors. Uh, wives will not give you any more sex in bed, and husbands will not do anything for you. So, And don't lecture don't, don't your kids about it. Yeah, do don't not. Your kids. You just do you, number one. Lead by example. Two, that's the number one problem. Number two, and this is the bigger problem, that stuff is still in your pantry and in your fridge. Mm-hmm. And it will try to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And it's got a louder voice than anything. Now, remember, you have a brain. Best I can tell, haagen does not have a brain. No. Either this Girl Scout cookies. That's right. It's Girl Scout cookie season. I see them oh, out this there. The grossest cookies. Oh, those little bitches tried to grab me the other day, leaving the girls. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, come there. No, no, leave me alone. I'm a crotchety old man. I'm not getting your cookies. I don't want your men. You're the you're the worst target for their sales. Oh, I, I please, you're looking at me. Wait, what? I'm gonna get some. What? what you want me to get the snuffleup or something? No, I'm not. No, I'm not getting them. What are those cookies called? The nut butter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what they're called. Thin mints. Pipes, mints and the whole thing. Okay. Tagalongs. That's you got to look at everything in your house that everyone else is eating as if it's a rattlesnake getting ready to strike. Stay away. You have to you have to put that in your head, right? It's going to be a battle. I will not sit here and tell you it's easy. But what can I can't I? tell you is look at Eric Koch, who like in a year lost 128 pounds. And now he's going to be losing a hell of a lot more because we're going to be talking. Okay? When I first started NSNG, 
I was in a not just a double divided household like I am now. I was in a triple divided household and had a middle schooler. Explain. Um, and I was the mom who made three dinners because I would make my NSNG and then I would make Lauren. He would have the protein, but then I would have to make him a starch. And then Lucy was a picky eater, so she would have her thing. And it's exhausting. So this is one reason why I make the food that I do and do the recipes that I do because I want everybody in the family to eat and enjoy stuff. However, don't be afraid to use your voice. Like if something, even to this day, ice cream doesn't really tempt me. But if there are uh, chips or crackers or snacky things like that, I always like the salty stuff. So what I've learned is to say to Lauren, or a baked good, if I see a baked good, that's especially if it's gluten-free, if it's not gluten-free, I won't be tempted because I have celiac. But he'll bring home something that's gluten-free thinking he's doing something nice so I can have a treat and I don't want it. Right. So what I do is I use my voice with him and I say, hey, I'm going to take your whatever it is, baked good, cookie, kringle, muffin thing, and I'm going to put it it's in the pantry, but I hid it behind some stuff because I don't want to open the pantry and every moment see that thing. Right. I am also a visual person. And what drives him crazy is that when, when I need to do something, I'll leave out my piles of things because the visual trigger will help me remember that it exists and I need to do it because there's too much going on in the brain. But at the same time, if I hide stuff, I forget, I forget that it's there. Not everybody's like that. Like I'll, I used to like freeze the Halloween candy and then forget that it was there and then find it, you know, in April and go, Oh my God, a Reese's, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so just don't be afraid to talk to the pe people in your family. They generally want to support you. And if they're not, um, there might be other conversations that need to be had down the line. But know that I want you guys to arm yourselves as best as you can when you're in a divided household. Because if the temptation's there, even if you're fully supported, if the temptation's there, the last thing we want is you sneaking off to sneak a little bite of this, that, or the other thing because you're having withdrawals. Look, it's not easy. Serena's had this really bad virus when she came back from California and she's feeling crappy. And, you know, the British, whenever they get really sick, the first thing they do is they make tea. So there's been a lot of tea making. Well, she drinks tea every day, but she just drinks regular tea for whatever reason. And she won't listen to me on this. And I won't even try it. And that's another thing. I'm not going to proselytize to her. She pulls out the honey. Yeah, it makes her feel better. I mean, Let it, her have it. Like, you know, it's, it's going to make her feel better. And, and, you know, even though it's causing inflammation, I'm not going to sit here and yell at her. You know, she's already in enough pain. But now, you know, we don't buy honey from the grocery store, right? We got like the neighbors that somebody gave us a, a jug right. from their thing. And it it's solid. And it's got, you got to get the. Yes, it's very right? crystallized. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. I see the honey sitting on the counter every day and it goes to what you were saying. I never think of honey. I never think of right. honey. Now I'm looking at this jar of honey going and boy, does it look good. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I finally said to Serena, honey, um, look, I know you want that. She even wrote a note, leave the stuff on the counter so she could just come out of the bed, make boom, bop, bop, boom. I finally said, honey, you just got to walk. Like, I got to put it away. Honey, I can't look at it because yeah. I want to I want to jam a spoon in there. You know, I'm a sugarholic. I just want to get a spoon in there and just oh, just a low taste. But I know what a low taste means, right? It never stops. It doesn't yeah, stop. It, it doesn't end. It doesn't end. So, yeah, I had to put it away. So when you said that, it reminded me. It's like, yeah, I just did the same sort of thing around here. So, for me, at least, out of sight, out of mind helps. Like it, it, it can't hurt to put it out of sight. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're so addicted. That's all you think of. You're like, oh, I've got to get it. And then, you know, it, it's going to take some work. It, everybody's different in how they handle the pressure of it. So cleaning out the pantry, all the stuff in the pantry. Um, I'm going to read a little list. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read some things that I have in my pantry that I use. Now, by the way, these are things that are technically NSNG. Some of the things might be higher in naturally occurring carbohydrates. So I don't use them as often. But they are items. They are tools in the tool shed of cooking NSNG. And then other things are just plain fats, like my NSNG ultra fats or my coconut oils. Yeah. And and those are great. So I'm just going to read a list of things. This is long, Vinny. I'm ready. Several cans of diced tomatoes, tomato paste, full fat coconut cream. I'm talking about the canned coconut cream with no sugar added. Canned pumpkin. Uh 
your nuts of choice. I do raw almonds, raw pecans or raw walnuts. I have pine nuts because I put that in pesto and things like that. I don't eat pine nuts as a snack. I don't almond flour. Does, but go on. I, I would hope not. Um, almond flour. I'm not making pignoli cookies though. Um, almond flour, coconut flour, flax meal. I, I, again, those are the ones I use the rarest, but there are applications when you want a coating on something. Um, every now and then you want to bake a little NSNG blueberry muffin. So that's not an all the time thing, but it is NSNG. Uh, any sort of canned fish, tuna, sardines, canned salmon. If you like canned fish, that's a wonderful thing. Make sure you get it packed in water because oftentimes the oils that they use are not great. Um, oh, let's talk real quick. Sesame seeds and sesame oil. You guys, sesame seeds, it's a seed. Um, you, you can use it as a garnish on stuff. Sesame oil is cold pressed. It's not the refined seed oils. I get asked that every day on X. Sesame oil, and also too, it's such a strong flavor. You use at most a quarter to a half a teaspoon in a whole recipe because it's so strong. So don't be afraid of sesame oil. It's a great flavor profile, um, but it's pressed. It's not a refined seed oil. Uh, salsa, again, check your labels for no sugar added. Salsa is great. Uh, for dipping vegetables into and snacking, you're not going to do the chips anymore, but it's also great for pouring onto roasts to cook, chicken to cook. It's a good flavor. It has acid in there, plus it has the flavor, so it's great. Uh, it's a tool to cook with. I'm going to rattle off a whole bunch of spices besides, obviously, eat happy kitchen spices. Dried spices and herbs, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, basil, cumin, smoked paprika, cinnamon, chili powder, thyme, dill are the most common ones. If you want to get fancy and you like white pepper, coriander, celery salt, Turmeric, cardamom, Chinese five spice, allspice, nutmeg, ground ginger, ground mustard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oils, olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, beef tallow, lard, no seed oils. Please do not think you need to use up your canola oil or your sunflower oil, oh, don't forget about corn that. oil. Just, don't just about get rid of those. Am I wrong on that? No, no, you're correct. But don't forget about butter. Oh, you know, butter. Yeah, right. but I'm doing but butter. I keep in the fridge. I keep one little thing yeah, of butter well, out you, of the counter. You, we, we, people are going to say cooking all. Really oh, yeah. Well, butter. Yes, butter. I'm talking about what's in the pantry, though. If y'all keep your butter in the pantry. Okay. Um, vinegars. Let's talk about vinegars because that's a big question, too. Uh, apple cider vinegar, white wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and red wine vinegar are the four that I use the most. You definitely want to make sure that it's just if it's the only ingredient is grapes or grape must. It's fermented. There's a little bit of residual sugar in vinegar, but it should have no sugar added. Avoid the word glaze. Don't buy a balsamic glaze or a whatever. But um, vinegar is actually a very healthy item. It's got the back, good bacteria. It's going to help feed your gut and it also cuts the fatty. We're eating more fat. And adding vinegar to a recipe is a nice thing to do to bring some acid into your meal. It's actually a balanced thing. That's why we have a flavor profile um, for that. Uh Let's see. Uh, okay. Mayo. This is loaded. Make your own or try to find one. I know Chosen Foods, Kensington's, maybe not Kensington's anymore, but Chosen Foods and Primal both have avocado oil mayo or make your own. Uh, Frank's Hot Sauce. It's still at this time. Tapatio and Frank's Hot Sauce still don't have any sugar added. Um, so those are good. People like their hot sauce to add some flavor. Um, and then Nuts. I know Vinny likes his uh, macadamia. Well, we talked about nuts. You like macadamias, right? I like the, the, I like them, but I just the pecans, never, I, the walnuts. I don't buy them very often. I'm, I'm, yeah. My my number one nuts. I'll give my nut list real fast: walnuts, pecans, yep. almonds, um, and that that's about that's about it. You want to be careful with nuts because oftentimes people will buy the nuts thinking, "I'm just going to have this for a little snack," but really, no one just eats like four nuts. You, you eat a couple handfuls and that could turn into a lot more. So just be aware of that. One thing I like about NSNG that Vinny teaches is like, try to get in touch with your own like hunger cues and like your behavioral cues. So if you're eating an entire package of nuts in a day, instead of eating real food, like for your lunch or your dinner, right? you're, you're not doing it right. <laughs> and, and and you don't have to count macros or calories to know that you're overdoing one particular food. Just just look at your pattern of eating and and and, and own up to your behavior. You have to be like, okay, hold on. I macked on those almonds and ate, you know, a 12 ounce bag in 24 hours. I need to cool it. Right. 
say talk about uh when you eat too much of a good thing the impunity thing yeah you know people say well can i have let's use meat right right um people like to go carnivore and I go well i can eat all the meat i want because that's what the body was intended and and they're correct about all that body was intended to eat that and the whole thing i've had more people go carnivore and then tell me hey i was doing great i was actually losing more weight and then i stopped it's like are you gaining weight stopped well, losing gain weight little, stopped losing weight mm -hmm. um, uh, and are you gaining weight well maybe a couple of pounds here and there you cannot even eat meat with impunity, which yeah. is one food that your body handles better than anything else. Overeating is a thing. The well, thing it's interesting. Eating, go on. You don't count calories and you don't count macros. And we always say calories in, calories out doesn't work. But calories to a certain extent do matter in the sense of overeating, but you don't need to count yeah. them. Yeah. You know, Look. Can I you have, be clear? Can you set, talk about I, that a little bit? Uh, yeah. I had a friend. I'm not going to mention his name. He's the billionaire, Don Connington's friend. You didn't have to. Um, and he was, uh, you know, he, he, he went, he couldn't control, you know, he's a sugar addict, you know, carb addict all the way around. And he finally figured out, he tried, he's my best friend. So he tried doing NSNG the way I do it. And he, he's, he was like, you know, I'm going to try this carnivore thing for a while. So, he did. And he started getting success. I mean, he lost like 50, 60 pounds. Yeah. Just, and he was still, I think he was eating, uh, he was still eating coconut oil. He was pretty much in SNG, coconut oil, this, that, and the other thing. But his meals were either eggs or beef. Mm -hmm. And I think on a rare occasion, fish, but rare occasion. And he lost 50 or 60 pounds. Now, the guy works out like a fiend because he likes to stay in shape to go climb mountains or whatever. So he's right. always working out. He goes to the gym a couple of days a week to do strength training. He's always doing aerobics. And he noticed that he wasn't losing weight anymore. As a matter of fact, maybe a couple of pounds started coming back on. Right. right? <clears throat> and I, you know, he said to me, we were, I want to say we were in Lone Pine and we were gearing up to go climb. <clears throat> And every night when we went to dinner, you know, if we were having hamburgers, I would I would look at the amount of hamburger meat you would get, and I would either order one or two, right, at this place we went to. And uh, he would order three or four, you know, just hamburgers. If we had steak, I would get one steak, and he would order two, and he would tell them, as soon as you serve me the first one, start cooking the second one, everything. And they thought he was crazy, but he would sit there and eat two say, And by the way, it gets very expensive very fast in restaurants, right? Yeah. And he was like, what's wrong with you? I mean, you? he's a billionaire, so. Yeah, of course. But look, he would sit around and go, what's wrong with you? You know, you, you're, you're having one. What, are you on a diet over there? Are you trying to stay skinny or whatever? He's like, no, Don, I eat until I'm full. I know one steak will fill me up. And if it doesn't, I can order something else. Mm -hmm. I can order a hamburger and eat half of that and bring the other half for breakfast. I can, I can do whatever I want, but I'm not going to sit here. And just because I'm on a carnivore diet and I can eat all the meat I want, I'm just going to sit here and hammer down two steaks when I know one will make me say it. Right. right. Well, then my question is, and sorry, Don, that we're talking about you, <laughs> but we are. That to me sounds more like food addict behavior Ne the necessary, you know what I mean? Like still continuing, well, uh, say, maybe, even maybe, though he's eating the healthy thing, you can still eat overeat. Maybe, like, was he full bit, or he, maybe he but, wasn't full? No, he was full, but he, you know, it was like, Hey, I'm, you know, you, you start hearing about, Hey, the more protein you get, the more muscle you got, you know? So I'm not, I can't stop him, but you know, he figured right. it out. He figured it out on his own. He's like, wait a minute. I'm not losing any more weight. I still have weight to lose. And Vinny doesn't have any weight to lose. Right. Mm, maybe, maybe you got to cut it back. Point. Well, this is why okay. our bodies are so intelligent. When you start to heal them, they will tell you when they're full. Right. So you have to, you have to, you have to learn that you, your body can be trusted. A lot of folks coming at this and myself included, it was, we've been taught by the diet industry to not trust our bodies. Do not trust your hunger signal. You're bad if you want to eat and uh, you're good if you don't eat. And you know what I mean? The messages are all messed up and we don't, we're not really connected with those signals that our body naturally gives us exactly you want to talk refrigerator items 
I can't wait. I bet. Heavy cream, butter, butter, heavy cream, yogurt. <laughs> Go on. There's, that concludes the dairy portion. Cheese. Um, full fat, full fat. If we're talking dairy, we're talking full fat. Eggs, eggs, eggs. I wrote wait, eggs, wait, eggs, whoa, whoa, whoa. eggs. Let me, let me jump in on dairy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Folks, if you're not a toddler, you don't need milk. There, I said it. But whoa, what about what about yogurt? Not the same as milk. What about cottage cheese? Not milk. You don't need <laughs> to take in liquid milk. Right. You don't need to drink heavy it. Cream is fine. You know, I use heavy cream in my coffee once a day. You know, once a day, yeah, because I like the way coffee tastes. I don't want to gum it up with cream every time. I want to taste. I should have had a coffee today. What? I should have had a second coffee today. Anna, it's too late in the day. Anna, I'm I'm sitting here yawning because I normally have my espresso. Yeah. I'm still waiting for my new espresso machine to come in. It's oh, not boy. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. Today is exactly a month after Christmas. Yeah. You know, the first one I bought, you know, I bought it was crap, right? So I got them. And by the way, the second one I mentioned on the show that Debbie put up on my Amazon thing, I ended up not getting that one. Oh. I ended up going with an ECM. So if you guys want to know which coffee machine I got, it's an E as in Eddie, C as in Kant, M as in Mary. I can say that because Serena's uh, British. Um, so ECM, I got one of those, and uh, it's coming in soon. But it's not here yet, so I'm not having my late-in-the-day espresso. And I didn't have time between shows to go make another pot of coffee, so I'm out. It's rough, Anna. It's rough being It's me. rough. It's rough. And here we are yeah. producing content yeah. despite not having afternoon oh. caffeine that yeah. we are so obviously addicted to. I do not have the elixir from the bean. Oh. I'll bean elixir. Oh, um, oftentimes at night, and I said it to Lauren last night, I can't wait till it's the morning and I can make coffee again. And he's like, you're so weird. Yeah, we do that every night. But I love it. I love when, it so much. When we're grinding up coffee for the drip in the morning, you grind oh, the night before so and good. you pour in the thing. It's like, oh, I just want to. You, you know what drives Serena nuts? Before I had a broken machine, she would, <laughs> she would open my door to my cellar and go, "Wait a minute, are you making? Are you making a spray? Because she could smell it upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. She goes, "Are you? Are you still drinking espresso down there?" I'm like, yeah. And she's like, it's it's 1030 at night. It's like, yeah, this football game is not going to end until 1130, 12. I'm good. I, 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 wi I wish I could drink coffee that late in the day. Oh, I, Lucy, I Lucy drink can. I, some people can. I can drink it, brush my teeth, go to bed. Mm -hmm. I can have a triple espresso, brush my teeth, go to bed. But also, I'm not upset if I drink coffee like after a big dinner and and I'm and I have because it does give you crazy dreams when you do go to sleep. I'm not sure you're getting a good night's sleep. No, but, I sleep like a baby. Oh no, I don't. But I kind of like having crazy dreams. Okay. We, um, by the way, okay. part of NSNG 101 is coffee. We'll get into that in a minute. But we're back on the fridge. Okay. Beef, ground beef, um, grass fed, grain fed, whatever you can. Here, well, let me just give the let me give the meat disclaimer. Number one, buy best quality meat and vegetables that you can afford that are available to you. I don't care. I don't care if you get the conventional beef on sale or the non-organic produce I don't, or you buy organic produce and you put all your money towards grass fed and organic. I don't care. We're not here to debate those things. We're here to tell you what to steer you towards in the grocery store. Then you get to make a choice. I love that you said steer. Boo. Speaking of. Yeah. Um, by the way, my guy, Jose at New Frontiers, grinds his own 75, 25 ground beef. And I buy that all day or day. Yeah. Um, but most most grocery stores, um, the highest fat content you'll find is 80, 20. That's all I can get here. Unless I go to the expensive place and they'll give me 75. Every now and again, Teats will do, they'll, they'll do the 75, 25. But they quit, for the most part, they quit. I keep asking my, my girl D behind the butcher counter over there. D, yeah, come D. on. Yeah. D. 
Come on, but she's not in control of it. You see, they 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 mandate it, and they go to make the eighty twenty. And she goes, "What about I Vinny? Know. It's like Vinny's one guy. We can't, you know." Anyway, go on. I love the seventy five. Yeah. I buy it in a pound and a half, and have him do up, you know, like five or six of them, and then I freeze them. So I have the. I love the seventy five. Right. Right. Okay, ground beef, highest fat content possible. You can use ground beef. In a pinch, in anything, burgers, meatloaf, meatballs, you can get a variety of ground meats, pork, chicken, turkey, lamb, whatever, mix it all together, make all kinds of things. I think I have no fewer than seven burger recipes between my cookbooks and the Substack, and plus, well, actually the Italian book doesn't have a burger recipe, but speaking of, can you write me a blurb? Yeah. And he's writing a blurb I've, for my I've been meaning, I've been meaning, Can you write the blurb and just let me fix it? No, I really. Okay, I'll I'll do it. I want I'll, your voice. I know I've been I've been so busy. Sorry, I'll get it done. Promise. Two sentences. Two sentences. How many? Yeah, that's all I need is two sentences. Yeah, yeah, twenty five to fifty words. Oh, I thought I had to write like a paragraph. No, I looked Blurb. at it. Went, I got to structure this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got <gasps> other thing. Okay, I'll I can blurb it. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you for reminding. Thank you. Thank send you. Me, send me another thing so it could be at the top of my email. Uh, okay, I will. Okay, I all will. right. Okay, back so wait, to the meats. Hang on, okay. hang on. You yeah. said you have seven recipes for for burgers. Oh, at least seven burger recipes that are out there. Okay, just, there's so you're, many. You're, you're lying to people because there's also the bachelor chili that that you use. Oh, but I was just talking about pat burger patties. Oh, I see. And, the and, chili. And, the, I have a shit ton of recipes, yeah, okay. including the bachelor chili, the Pittsburgh chili, the red and green chili chili, which is a Texas style chili. Um, okay, let me go into other cuts of meat. Uh, meatballs you name it okay chuck eye steaks or ribeye if you're fancy denver steaks or sirloin for stews i'm gonna tell you something i got a pot roast two days ago and it was like a tiny pot roast and i was like if i make this in the slow cooker it's just gonna be so small right so i cut i cut up that pot roast yesterday and i threw in uh mushrooms onion celery and carrot that i knew were all about to go bad poured a jar of the puttanesca over it i call it stutanesca and made the best stew. I'm going to reheat it for dinner tonight. Unbelievable. You see, that, that's how you do it. For, and look, the if cheap you, pot roast that was on sale and it was the last little leg nubby one. I was like, I'll get that. But then I was like, you know what? I'll just cut it up. Make it. It's better than the cut up stew meat that they have at the store that they charge you more for because they had to cut it up. Right. It's easy to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and, boneless and, or bone in short ribs. You know, every time oh. we get that big giant roast, what, what do you call that? Uh, around Christmas time? Uh, oh, the, the standing rib roast, the prime and, rib. Yeah, I always slice off about an inch and make myself a fillet. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you're stealing. You're stealing. Yeah, you're yeah, stealing from like, yourself. Yeah, but it's like it's going to take. The best know. part about that is having the leftover with eggs. Mm. That's the best steak and eggs. Standing rib roast. Is oh God, it's the best. All right, um, beef roast, chuck roast, tri-tip brisket, flank steak, skirt steak, flat iron, like just. There's no shortage of beef recipes and eat happy, eat happy too. And on the sub, I mean, by now I have published over 500 recipes. When this new book comes out over 600 and some rest, 620 recipes, like there's no shortage of ideas. I don't know what to cook. I'm just in <laughs> I even put uh, 600 books, recipes. I even put the books on the eat at eathappykitchen.com as PDFs. For eight ninety nine each, they're nine ninety nine at Amazon. I put them on for a buck cheaper than Amazon. Wow! Just go get them, go get them. You um, can get your whole books for eight ninety nine. Yeah, on PDF. Okay, that that's ridiculous, folks. I know. Go get all three of them, and get the yeah. one I'm getting ready to blurb. I will. I actually, I have to. We'll talk about this in a couple of weeks. The publisher is printing the new book overseas, and they've asked that I ask everybody to pre-order. I'm going to come up with kick-ass bonuses for everybody who does this pre-order during because it's so early. It drives me nuts. Yeah, but is what it is. So yeah, the book the book's done. So we're just gonna wait for it to print overseas, and yeah. of course, Vinny's blurb is the most important part that we're waiting on. Yeah. Um, okay, chicken. Again, high fat chicken, or if you're going to cook with chicken breast, because a lot of people, Vinny, who are coming from diet culture like myself, you're used to eating chicken breasts and they're used to not, they're not tasting good. So we're going to add fat and flavor to chicken breasts. If you 
don't like the dark meat and you have to cook with the chicken breast, we're going to be adding fat and flavor to those chicken breasts. But for everybody else, chicken thighs are your friend. Chicken legs are your friend. Okay. And um, the way I learned how to make like chicken wing style chicken legs and chicken wings mm -hmm. and drumsticks and the whole thing. That's right. When I say thighs, I meant thighs and, and, and um, I learned how to bake them. So when I'm watching the games this weekend or the ones that just happened this past weekend for the, mm -hmm. I call these the semifinals before we go to Super Bowl. Right. I'm going to be making that with the old Bay and the whole thing. And also mm -hmm. one with Anna Vocino's, um, I do an Anna Vocino's uh, uh, barbecue. <laughs> Yep. And then I get I get the uh I get the Franks, the Franks hot so sauce. Good. Mm -hmm. And then I get the sour cream or the creme fraiche, and I make the uh blue cheese and I also yep. make uh, the Anavocino with the dill. Mm -hmm. You got all the flavors. It's like in I'm there. not missing anything. No, you don't You're miss like, anything. And by the way, I'm having this big giant protein meal that tastes like snack food, like if I went to to like a you know a bar with the brewery and the whole thing watching the game. I'm watching right here in my office and I feel like I'm out with the boys. It makes me almost want a beer, but I don't drink beer because it's too carby, but it makes me go, Oh, I wish I had a beer. Yeah. 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 The important it. thing about, especially because Super Bowl is coming up in a week after this episode comes up, right? Two weeks. Yeah. No, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Um, <clears throat> Ton, tons of NSNG possibilities. Just stay away from the Doritos and the chips and stay away from the, uh, like the fries, the potatoes, uh, you know what I mean? The Pittsburgh make, chili. Make some amazing dips, make some meat. Yeah, Pittsburgh chili. I actually am publishing a new recipe this week on Substack that will come out. It's a pickle dill, dill pickle ranch dip. That's going to come out. And that's oh, cool. Gonna be, it's going to be real good. And, uh, you know, for Super Bowl last year, we made the, um, we made the Pittsburgh chili. Yeah, it's it's Super Bowl food. It's going to be it's cold great. that day, probably rainy. Who knows? It's it's kind of the way to go. And and know, knowing me, I'm going to do the chicken wings and the whole thing. And that yeah, whole. you have to. But I'm going to be sitting here by myself pretty much. Yeah. I'm going to be flying back on a plane from Atlanta, so I'm going to miss it, which bums me out because I love making Super Bowl food. So let me just go through a couple ideas with chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I always make my dill chicken thighs. Chicken tikka masala from the first book. You can make a stir fry um, using cauliflower rice as your right. Uh, cauliflower rice is, of course, you know, pulsated cauliflower to, in the shape of rice. <clears throat> We're not saying to eat rice. This is cauliflower cut up to look like rice. Uh, chicken thighs can be turned into taco meat and shredded. Uh, egg roll in a bowl is a great way to eat chicken thighs. Bone in, skin on. Lemony chicken thighs. Crispy orange chicken thighs. Um, chicken legs, Tori's chicken legs. Uh, you can do the combine with thighs and do the chicken cacciatore. That's a Paul Capelli recipe. Chicken breast for chicken parm, chicken with the ch spinach, artichoke, and cherry tomatoes, uh, Milanese cutlets, um, you know, chicken wings. Vinny just gave you great ideas for chicken wings. Pork. Okay. Pork chop. I'm going to, I know we're going to talk about cured pork, but let's just talk about the fresh pork first. Pork mm -hmm. chops. Um, they only sell the pork chops at the butcher mm -hmm. counter. They don't pre-pack them at my local grocery store. So I always try to get them to pick the one with the most fat around yeah. the edge. But pork chops, pork tenderloin is super easy to cook and, and delicious. Pork belly, if it's available, it is more expensive. Pork butt or pork shoulder roasts are great for carnitas, for pulled pork, for pork rillettes. Um, loose sausage. Loose sausage and um, case sausage in the casing. You just need to make sure you read the ingredients. You can make your own. I actually have a two great make your own sausage recipes, loose sausage recipes in Eat Happy Two, um, with the a correct proportion of spice mix and everything. But if you're going to buy it pre-made, make sure you're checking the labels for no sugar added. Now, bacon. We obviously all eat a lot of bacon. We love the bacon, but you can overdo the bacon. OK, I know that that is another thing that people yeah. are like, that's crazy. Um, Vinny, explain the bacon and how they cure the bacon and why it would say sugar, but it has zero grams of sugar. OK, they, they use uh, dextrose usually because it's the cheapest form of sugar they can find to cure bacon. And uh, it, it's used in the curing process. If you're getting just regular bacon, 
it's not enough sugar to outweigh not using that bacon. Now, that being said, do yourself a favor. Bacon is not something people eat tons of every day, right? Go find a butcher who's curing their own bacon. Because even though they're going to use not dextrose, they're going to probably use real sugar or something like that. They're not using a lot. And most of it is burned off when you're cooking it anyway. And it's it, you're going to love this bacon so much more than if you got like a Hormel or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, um, Pepperidge Farm. I don't know who makes bacon anymore. Um, Oscar Mayer, any of these companies. Where was I? I was somewhere. Someone was like, it's like I smell bacon, but I smell like some funky thing. It was maple flavored bacon. Yeah, no. I'm like, what the hell? What? And what it's upsetting sweet hell is you'll this? taste it right away too when you go to a restaurant and you're like, I'll have the side of I'll have eggs and bacon, and they bring it and you taste that bacon. And you're like, You guys, I don't want sugar bacon. Yeah. I just want bacon. Just you could get regular bacon. So you'll taste it in the sausage too. Behind. Once you get off the sugar, you'll start to taste it where they put it in things that you're not obviously in the restaurant, you can't control what's what's coming out the kitchen sometimes. Um, that's great. Same thing. Same idea with salami, cured salami, mortadelle, pancetta, things like that. You know, you're going to use them for flavor. You're going to use them for uh, salami is a good little put it on a little charcuterie board. Salami, though, is one of those things that you can overdo. Like the snacky, like people will you just keep eating the salami instead of just like sit and prepare yourself a little meal, like right. actually have a meal with with fresh food, you know? Serena will do it where I'm, I'm not big on cured meats, but Serena will have either some prosciutto or some salami. Prosciutto, that's the one do, I forgot. She'll do two or three slices of the salami and two or three slices of cheese. She'll put the cheese in the salami, but the rest is put away. If you don't put it away, right. you got to keep going. Of course. You know, we, Especially if you we haven't eaten dinner yet, do. you're going to, yeah. I wrote, we just, in, we, you know, cut it, but put it back in the, and then eat. Yeah. If you leave it out, you're going to keep eating. It's just the way it is. Fish, one of my favorites. Um, salmon, salmon, and salmon. And then I love cod, halibut, branzino. Um, I love shrimp and I love scallops. Those are my favorites. Tilapia is good. Sole is good. I just find that the thinner white fish, I have to buy so much of it to get full. <laughs> so I like to, I like the meatier. That's why I like salmon and a cod and halibut i like a, a meaty and don't fall asleep on steelhead trout folks it's oh uh, god trout's so good anything that's a salmon recipe you can make it with trout yeah pretty much yeah perfect um I, and by the way i know we're skipping stuff feel free to tweet ideas out and things like that we're, we're you know this is not by all means the comprehensive end all list okay let's talk veg shall we Leafy and oh, cruciferous. You, you, oh, I'm sorry, you said veg. Okay, go on. Veg. Let's talk veg. Leafy yeah. and cruciferous. Broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, green beans, zucchini, onion, garlic, leeks, bell pepper, spinach, kale, chard, yellow squash, Brussels sprouts. I prefer red leaf or butter lettuce for salads. I don't eat salads all the time, but sometimes I like a salad because oftentimes I'll just make a giant fatty ribeye steak and I want a little acid and a little green to go with it. Sometimes I'll just steam broccoli. And sometimes I'll make a little salad with my Villa Capelli. I'll drizzle Villa Capelli, squeeze a lemon over it, done. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of recipes in my cookbooks. And also, you guys are probably shocked at how simple we keep things for dinner because after writing recipes all day, I don't actually want to sit and like cook a giant dinner. I'm tired of it. So, can relate. Um, fresh herbs, grow them in the garden. I love mushrooms. Mushrooms are really a great way to like beef up your recipe in a cheap way. Like if you have some meat and you want to beef up the whole recipe, add some mushrooms to it to like fill out the calories, I guess. You know what I mean? Make people full. Um, we're not doing white potatoes. And I know Vinny says, get off the sweet potatoes, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. But then I know a lot of people will do um, some sweet potato from time to time. Yeah. depending on where they are in their goals. That is why I think I have one sweet potato recipe in each book. Oh, no, the second book has two sweet potato recipes out of 160. By the way, that's the first, I, it's, oh, it never fails. It never fails. That's, that'll be the first thing somebody opens the book to and they're like, well, 
thought we weren't supposed to have that. Yeah, I know. But it, turn, it just turn enough. the page. They write to me all the time. Oh, you let this animal chin on your show. She makes sweet potatoes. Sweet potato. I'm like, yeah, you, she's you know killing what? people. Shut up. Get out of here. <laughs> and it's called eat happy. Yeah. It's not called eat ridiculous. Well, you know, and I will say in the same vein, butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash and acorn squash are probably the lower glycemic. If we're going mm -hmm. there. Um, spaghetti squash is a great substitute if you're missing pasta or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I, listen, if somebody got fat because they overate spaghetti squash, please contact us. We want to interview you. Yeah, we need to know what the hell happened. <laughs> we need to know, like, what the hell did you do <laughs> to eat that much spaghetti squash? Um, and again, I keep coming back to the idea of, like, getting back in tune with your hunger cues, you know, and your satiety cues. Because when that happens, it's like there's a freedom that occurs and you realize you don't have to like necessarily demonize whole foods. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and that's what I really like about your message is that you're the voice of reason in a space where it's like, no, you can't be trusted. You have to count your macros and you have to eat fake sweeteners and you have to do. Th there's all this trickery and tomfoolery that happens. It's never worked. Never worked. Never will. Period. Um. Fruit. This is a trick question, guys. Fruit, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocado, fresh berries, if they're in season. I love having lemons and limes on hand because I just, I love a squeeze of citrus and things. Um, and don't write me saying that a lime has, you know, however many grams of carbs in it. Right. It you're me using nuts. it to get a little acid into food. You're not. Yeah, you're not drinking. A half a gallon of lime juice into Exactly. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, people are, can I have a little? It's like, yeah, you, no one got fat and cooking with limes. I'm sorry. Um, right. You didn't mention olives, which are also. In oh, there. olives. Hold on. Yeah. Let me type in. yeah. Add it to the list for next year. And by the way, the only fruit juice I agree with is olive juice, which is olive oil, which is Villa Capelli, folks. Villa Capelli yeah. is the longest running sponsor of this show. Villa Capelli. Listen, um, I was having a little Villa Capelli right after I got off my rowing machine because I didn't have time to eat anything. So here's what I did. I got a couple of pieces of cheese because it was already out. We keep it out on the counter sometimes during the day. So I, I chopped up a couple of pieces of cheese. I threw it on a plate. I hit it with some malt and salt. I know that sounds weird, but I did. And then I drizzled Villa Capelli over it. It's like I just ate a meal. Yum. Boom. Done. Okay. I, the only thing that was missing was my espresso. But Villa Capelli doesn't sell that. I'm sorry. Maybe Stephen can donate me an espresso machine that can cover me <laughs> if I shows up. They just use the mocha pot over there. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I was talking about mocha pots on my last podcast with my last guest. Yeah. It's in the vibe in the air. If you guys want to get your hands on some Villa Capelli olive oil, which you do, which you do, um, go to vinnytortridge.com and click through the banner ad or just go directly to villacapelli.com and uh, use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, and you'll get 10% off your order each and every time you order from there. Now, we always say try to get your cart up to like 145, 150, so that after you get the 10% off, you qualify for the free shipping. Um, but I trust and believe if you launch in with the three liter tin, you are making a wonderful life decision yeah. because it's, it's really, really great. It's the only olive oil I ever have. And you guys are going to love it. We have one quick little section that I just want to read about the freezer real quick. Sure, I'm in no rush. Your, your freezer. Well, I know the show's getting a little long in the tooth, so I want to wrap it up. But the freezer, again, um, I, everybody's got like an old, like a box of popsicles that has like two frostbitten popsicles and like some old ice cream and some old frozen something like pop tarts or bullshit in there where is this freezer no it's, everyone's freezer has it take it out and throw it away you're no one your kid's not going to eat that gross popsicle you're you know what i mean nobody wants that just throw clean out the freezer right. put put extra meat in there okay that just free buy as much meat when it's on sale as you can and freeze it you can always thaw it out and and make a dinner another tip is to make sure you save your bones and your chicken carcass. And you just, with this caveat, if saliva has been on the bone, like if somebody's eating a rib, <laughs> do not save that bone because that will keep, uh, ba yeah, bacteria, bacteria will grow in the freezer, yeah. okay? So the reason why you're keeping your bones is because you're going to make homemade broth. 
And here's why. It's delicious. It's good for your tummy. It's got, you can add some salt to it, get some electrolytes. Um, and also too, it's, you're going to use it when you cook with stuff homemade. And once you start cooking with homemade broth, you'll never buy the boxed broth ever again. I oh, buy the boxed absolutely. broth and I give it to the dogs. So yeah. the dog, one dog, there's only one. It feels like more than one because she's high maintenance. Yep. Um, so the freezer, you know, you can get frozen vegetables, frozen spinach. If you want to get like Trader Joe's sells the mirepoix, which is the cut up onion, celery and carrot. If you, you know, if this stuff gives you shortcuts that helps you to make homemade stuff, do it. There's no, I have no judgment on that at all. Like just make sure you're just reading the ingredients because they will try to sneak some, some sugar, some preservatives, some seed oils every now and then, especially if like my favorite Worcestershire sauce, the Lee and Perrins, they added, they never used to put sugar in Worcestershire sauce, Crazy. which is basically a fish sauce, by the way. Yeah. And then they start putting sugar in it. You're like, why? Yeah. Anyway. So that's, that's, there's your, we gave you guys a big shopping list. It's also listed at my website. It's also listed. You have a big list in your PDF of what to shop. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that people have written in the Facebook groups, what to shop. Um, start to start to get familiar with some recipes that look good and fun to make and make them a few times. If you really like them, keep making them and then you'll kind of commit them to memory and it'll be a lot faster next time. My favorite thing in the world, Vinny, is when people say, and I would say you kind of fill out this category as well. I never really used to cook, but now I can like knock out a couple things and it feels really good and I'm not afraid to be in the kitchen. Yeah, anymore. look, I, I do it. Serena's on the road sometimes and, uh, you know, I, I just get in there and roll up the sleeve. I enjoy doing it. It's relaxing. I get my mind off of work for a little bit and think mm -hmm. of something else. I, I love doing it. I'm just not very good at very many things. I, I know how to make a few things. Oh, one of the things, um, and this is kind of hoity-toity and expensive. When you were talking about canned fish earlier, mm -hmm. uh, I meant to say, and this is for special occasions, folks. Every now and then, I'll get a can of lump crab meat. Mm. And I love uh, lump crab meat. Yeah. I had the best crab cake recipe in the second book. Oh, look, I grew up in. Yeah. I grew up on the Chesapeake Bay. Y'all, you could take that. You can uh, you can take an avocado, cut it in half, stuff it in the avocado, throw yes. some cheese and butter on there put, and bake and it. Put the obey on it. Yeah. And just pop it in the oven, some salt, some butter, some cheese in the oven. Boom. I do that sometimes. People go, oh, people. Serena goes, oh, my God, it's like a gourmet meal. It's like, yeah. And could you imagine what that would cost if you went to a restaurant? That would be a You'd, 30 40 dollar dish. Don't buy lump jumbo lump crab meat anything unless you're in Maryland. Yeah. If you can get it, you know, for cheap in a can, this and that and the whole thing, you have a gourmet meal for pennies on a dollar compared to if you went to a restaurant and tried to get that same thing. Can you imagine an avocado and lump crab meat in a restaurant where that might cost? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me just mention one thing because we do get asked about this. Um, cassava flour, anything that says it's grain free, but then you look on the ingredients and it says cassava flour or tapioca <laughs> starch. Those are higher starchy tubers. And I think you're going to find that they mess with your goals. Yeah. I, I would steer clear. Good, good, good catch, Anna. Folks, we're going to do another 101 next week, but we're going to talk about exercise. Yes. 101 and uh you know that sort of thing so anna will be asking me questions we'll talk about aerobics yeah. and anaerobics and maybe if we have time remaining we'll talk about if you want to set up a little home gym how you might do that and love not. it but if we don't have time to do the home gym thing we will move that to the following show so a lot right. of 101s that go off this time of year i like to wait until everybody's settled in towards the end of january but here we are uh, folks, Anna Vocino has books out there, Eat Happy Kitchen, Eat Happy and Eat Happy Too. She's got a third book coming out, but we're not going to talk about that yet because you guys are going to get confused. But you can go check out eathappykitchen.com. Eat Happy Kitchen. You'll learn everything you just heard. You can, oh, where? Oh, you guys are going to write to me. Where can I find out? The, go to eathappykitchen.com. Do it. You can also get all your sauces, powders, and everything there. Um, you know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go there, go to VinnyTotteries.com. Click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. We're able to keep the show free for a gazillion years in a row. 
Sign up, excuse me, sign up for Vinnie Tartarich's forward slash VIP. Vinnie Tartarich forward slash VIP. It is probably closed by the time, wait, wait, when is this show coming out? Monday, the 29th. Oh, this is the day when the VIP, I think, shuts down. Great. Right. If it doesn't, let me let me just look and see. If it doesn't shut down tonight, it, it shut down last night. But uh, you can let's see where, where let's see here, Chris. And please remind Serena, eleven fifty nine on the twenty eighth. So if you're listening to this show, it's too late to be <laughs> in the VIP. I've, I've shut it down. It shut down at midnight last night. But here's the deal. Sign up, Vinny you know, and when we open it up again, you'll be the first to know. I may not open it up for another couple of months. Everybody that's in a VIP group loves to be there, um, and we will open it up again at some point. But, you know, there you have it. Love seeing everybody in a VIP group. It's an accountability group that we um, we have there. So go check it out. So on behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life into living, and let's do it with just a little bit more of Melody. <laughs>